Girls, this is Romy here, and welcome back to Seduce Me 2, the demo. We are officially on our last route, which is Eric. So, let's get right to it. A sweet lullaby, one you would hear as you were rocked in your mother's arm as a child. I cannot help but adore such melodies with every ounce of my being, smiling whenever one would play for me. It was only fitting that I would enjoy my dreams with the sound of one playing in my head. My slumber was calm and peaceful as a sweet tune echoed in the abyss of my subconscious. I didn't know why, but I relished that tune that night. Strange, really, how a melody could calm any storm running through, my, through your heart. My storm was my engagement to Eric, my demon soulmate. Yes, he was my soulmate, my prince. At the same time, he was indeed a demon. I adored him with every ounce of my being, and I was about to be married to him the whole weeks ahead. I couldn't have been more nervous and excited about the whole ordeal. Still, the lullaby that floated in my dreams kept me calm and at peace. I wonder if the same music could suit an actual child. <laughs> a child's laughter broke me from my peace, caused me to slowly open my eyes and awaken from my slumber. My eyes focused on the ceiling as I tried to figure out what the, what the sound was. Was it part of my dream? It was effective enough to wake me up. I rose from the bed, looking around the room in confusion. Why had I heard a child's laugh? How did it wake me up? It was strange to say the very least. A child's voice? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> However, before I could contemplate about it further, a slight dip in the bed to my side made me gasp softly in surprise. I looked to my side to see Eric, still asleep beside me. He looked so peaceful and happy, like he was absorbed in a joyful dream of his own. I couldn't help but smile at the sight before leaning down and kissing his forehead. He shifted slightly, mumbling my name. I giggled softly. He was just too adorable for words. I truly loved him with all of my heart. I love you. So despite wanting to stay in bed a little longer with the man of my dreams, the child's laughter ushered me to slowly creep out of bed and leave the room to find where it had come from. Why the hell would you ever do this? I would not. I would stay in bed. <laughs> Turning on the lights in the lobby, I looked around the main part of the mansion to find out where the laughter had come from. <laughs> yeah. Hell to the new. I, my, um, I'm staying in bed. Creepy child's laughter in the middle of the night is no new good news. It's never good news. I heard the laughter trail off as if the voice itself was moving, guiding me to where it wanted to go. I maintained a per I maintained pursuit, not wanting to lose track of it. Any normal person would have been creeped out. I, however, was brave enough to figure out what was going on by myself. And that's how you die. That's how people die. I was led to my grandfather's office. It was his place of work, as well as his sanctuary for his magic study. I knew that he studied magic and had come to accept it during my time with Eric and his brothers. Still, it was something I was curious about. The lights were on, but the laughter seemed to have faded away as I entered the room. Was I not in the right place? As I stepped further into the room, I felt a sense of nostalgia. Despite only ever finding the room after my grandfather's passing, something about this place made me feel warm and happy, like I belonged here. This was where my grandfather oops, hit the mic, sorry. This was where my grandfather imagined his greatest toys and made them come to life. It was here where he studied endlessly about the demon world and the demon magic. I felt like I was stepping into a museum of history. Thinking about it, I began to wonder what my grandfather would think if he knew I was going to marry one of the incubi he had brought into the human world. I knew he had been the one to do it. Damien confessed to me when Eric proposed. What? <laughs> it was a bit interesting to think about how he would have reacted. Would he be proud? Would he be disappointed? I could never know. I was broken out of my thoughts, however, as I heard the click of a lock and latching echo through the room. I turned my head towards the sound, pinning the origin of it on one of the nearby drawers. Why did I unlock on its own? I was a little nervous as to why I had done that. Let's open it. You're already brave enough to leave the room. Why did might as well be brave enough to open it? I was indeed my grandfather's granddaughter. I felt my curiosity take control of my body. It guided me to the drawer. Sliding it open, I saw two books neatly placed in a drawer, covered with a thin layer of dust. One was obviously my grandfather's magic book, and the other must have been his journal. 
I lifted both up and examined them, gingerly wiping the dust off of them. I wanted to read a bit more about each one of them, but I wasn't sure which one to open first. We're reading the magic book because I, I was more intrigued by that. I opened the magic book first, wanting to explore its contents before seeing grandfather's notes. Maybe I'd learned something. As I opened it, I was surprised to see the first couple of pages were completely blank. <sighs> what? I continued to flip through the pages to find only more blank pages. Was this book not really a book, but a notebook of some sort? Is there invisible ink? Yo, invisible ink. I stared at the pages, unsure of what it was per its purpose was. As I gazed onto the blank sheets, however, they began to very slowly fill up with words and images. Wh what? The images that formed the pages looked to be painted with a brushstroke, with brushstrokes while the wording was in an elegant cursive that I could read clearly. The top of the first page, however, had a word in simple lettering. Spirits. Why was the book wanting to show me information on spirits? The laughter that drove me to the room sounded like a child. Was it from a spirit? I read onward, curious as to why the book was showing me this. Spirits were categorized by their own origins. Angels and devils could never be spirits, only reborn through a cycle to become angels and devils once again. Human spirits were either brought to heaven, pur pur purgatory, or hell, depending on what they had done during the course of their lives. If they were kind and good, they were gifted entry to heaven. If they were evil and cruel, they were sent to hell. I was surprised. Did this make Christianity legitimate? Yo, this is something I should not be reading out <laughs> It didn't mean... It didn't mention God, so I wasn't entirely sure. For those that are offended, I'm terribly sorry. I'm just reading. <laughs> I wanted to close the book, but my curiosity led me to read on. Demons, on the other hand, either were sent to pur purgatory, not sure if I'm saying it correctly, or were reincarnated into a new demon. Demons could never be human. However, humans and demons share one thing in common. They both could also end up not being sent anywhere. Sometimes a spirit could be trapped in either world, forever doomed to wander until something is fulfilled. Ghosts exist too? <laughs> this was crazy. And yet it made sense. Maybe those TV shows that featured ghost encounters actually had merit. The idea of seeing a ghost was a bit unbelievable. Sure, it was surreal enough meeting demons and a devil, but ghosts seemed to be a bit more... Realistic, in a way. Regardless of who you were in the human world, you knew about ghosts. Not a lot of people knew about demons. The fact that demons could also be spirits boggled my mind as well. Was it really possible to meet a demon spirit? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> the child's laughter reappeared, softly floating through the air, making me turn toward the door. I quickly followed it, leaving the room and returning to the lobby. Is anyone there? As I turned to the stairs, I could hardly believe my eyes. A floating orb, barely the side of my head, was floating down the stairs and toward the back doors. I gripped the railing and stared, not believing what I was seeing. Was this really happening? What was it even? A ghost? A spirit? Some illusion meant to trick me? I couldn't wrap my head around it. Still, it practically called me with the tail behind it. I continued to follow it. It seemed to want me anyway. Was this a game? Oh, yo, that's kind of freaky. <laughs> I thought I was seeing no face. If, if no face appears, I am out. This game will be out. It led me to the backyard where it simply floated in the air near the gazebo. I stayed by the doorway, unsure of actually stepping out of the house to meet with it. It didn't move, so I could only assume it accepted my hesitation. Hello? <laughs> Hi! Oh, it sounds adorable! The aura gently spun around itself in a circle, almost like a happy child. For some reason, it made me feel really happy seeing it, despite it being a simple floating orb. It seemed friendly enough, so I stepped out into the backyard, slowly made my way towards it. It gently bobbed up and down as if it were waiting for me to approach. I stopped a couple feet away from it, and I wanted to get too close in case it was a trick. Hi there. Hi! What's your name? My name? Oh, it's... <laughs> we actually say our name for the very first time. Oh, it's Michiko. Wow, that's a pretty name. Thank you. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, I'm no one. I don't have a name. Uh, you don't have a name? No, I wasn't able to get one. But that's okay. I'll get one soon. 
that's kind of sad. The orb, whatever it was, had to be the spirit of some child. Human? I didn't know. I wasn't sure. All I knew was how sweet and innocent it sounded. The child's voice was pulling at my heartstrings in all the right ways. The orb twirled around and uh, around again with a smile and laugh. With a small laugh. <laughs> smile. Let's play together! Oh, um, I mean, what would we play? I almost couldn't believe the words coming out of my mouth. Was it really okay with playing games with the spirit? I mean, it was friendly, yes, but it was a spirit. What was <laughs> what I was doing out in the middle of the night with what there was another question I let go of and fade away in my head as I stare at the orb. My heart felt fuzzy and warm enough to ignore the doubt niggling at my brain. This orb dipped and spun around my body, making me giggle and try to, fo try to follow it. As it circled back to where it used to be, it almost bounced in the air happily. Come on, let's dance! Oh, okay, we can dance, I can do that, I guess. In game, not in real life, I have no... No, I don't have <laughs> the dancing powers. I began to dance around the orb as it moved gracefully around my form. In my head, a song began to play as I had fun weaving a swing with the orb. I felt light and happy, even though a part of my mind was questioning what I was doing. Why was I doing this? Why was I accepting of this? <laughs> Why was I so accepting of this spirit? My body was moving on its own, but I was enjoying every minute of it. The orb followed along, matching each sway with one of its own. A soft laughter echoed from it once in a while after every couple of steps I took. It seemed to enjoy my company, which in turn somehow made me happy. Princess? Uh... <laughs> the orb gasped and hid behind me as I stopped dancing. I turned quickly to see Eric standing by the door frame with a confused but tired look on his face. Eric! What are you doing out here, love? I blushed, rubbing my hands together behind my neck for embarrassment. I must have looked like a fool dancing in the yard in the middle of the night. I turned my head to look at the orb, but gasped in surprise when I realized that it had disappeared. What? Uh huh? What's wrong? There was. I was beyond lost and confused. What was happening? What had just happened? I turned back to Eric to see him walking towards me. I crossed my arms, realizing how cold the night air was, and smiled meekly at Eric. I just wanted to get some fresh air, that's all. While dancing by yourself? I stared at Eric, not sure of what he meant. If he was watching, he would have seen the spirit dancing with me. Tell him. You didn't see the orb that was dancing with me? Huh? Orb? Eric raised an eyebrow, obviously not understanding what I meant. Did I really not see it? It's true. There was a spirit here that looked like an orb and I was dancing with it. Not by myself. I knew it. It wasn't making sense. He didn't seem to believe me. Still, I didn't want to lie to him. He was going to be my husband soon, so we had to trust each other. If my reason sounded stupid, fine. But at least it was the truth. Eric finally smiled and reached towards me before petting my head. Did you have fun then? <laughs> Wait, he really did believe me? I wasn't entirely sure if he did, but from the look he gave me, he was willing to accept my answer either way. Eric gently reached out and took one of my hands, placing his other hand on my waist. I looked up at him to see his lips curve into a small, playful smirk. Would you mind if I dance with you then, princess? <laughs> it kills me every time he says princess. <laughs> like, killing in a nice way, not in a terrible way. <laughs> My face turned red at his question, but I smiled and nodded. I like dancing with him. I tightened my hands over Eric's, straightening up and leaning against his chest, ready to dance. Eric chuckled softly before leading me to a slow but elegant waltz around the backyard. I felt like I needed to thank the spirit later for giving me yet another wonderful memory with Eric. He led me around the backyard as if we were at a real ball. The moon served as a brilliant crystal ch chandelier and the wind became our music. Eventually, however, we had to go back inside. The night was cold and it was very late. I didn't want the night to end, though. Watching Eric as we walked up the stairs to the bedroom, my heart began to flutter. Even more in a soft heat began to burn in my core. He was not only charming, but he was handsome and definitely knew what buttons to press to make me feel amazing. It didn't matter that he was an incubus. I really had fallen in love with him and was both romantically and sexually attracted to him. Though, did I really want to pursue my desires right now? We did just stop dancing. 
What, why is that an excuse? Because we were dancing. <laughs> the burning in my core wasn't just going to go away. As Eric and I approached our room, I quickly pulled his arm and turned him around to face me. What? Okay, here's the sexual music in cue, just on point. <laughs> Before I could finish the sentence, I jumped and wrapped my arms and legs around him, kissing him deeply. Instinctively, he circled his arms around me to support me, but he stared in shock at my eagerness. Within seconds, he melted into the kiss and pants it against my lips, making my moan reply at the sound. He tightened his grip around me as he walked backward towards the bed. With his leg, when his legs hit the side of the mattress, he sat down and allowed his hands to my back. I pulled away from the kiss ever so slowly, enjoying every moment that I was still connected to his lips before letting out a small sigh. I was pretty sure I had made myself clear, but I gave him a softly spoken demand. I don't want to go to bed yet. Eric stared at me before licking his lips, slowly running his hands under my shirt and up and back. Tingles shot up my spine as his fingers ran over my bare skin, a shuddering moan escaping my lips. As my princess commands. I wonder how the voice actors felt when they're doing their, like, sensual lines at this point of the game. <laughs> I would be giggling to hell. I felt Eric gently lift my shirt up and I lifted my arms for him to fully remove it from my body before he tossed it to the side. The cool air hitting my skin made me shudder as Eric pulled me back in for another heated kiss. Damn, his hands were, his hands were memorizing my body. Uh, he knew what spots to caress, marking me, me, not marking, making me buck my hips against his and tighten my hold on him. When I felt his smirk against my mouth, I softly bit onto his lower lip, telling him silently not to play with me. I felt the warm sensation of his enthrallment invade my body, causing me to cuddle closer against his chest and softly grind my hips against his knee. His enthrallment was part of our foreplay, adding ten times more pleasure <laughs> to our sex. I knew that he poured every ounce of his love for me into our lovemaking. Every time we had sex, it was just another confession of true love between us. It wasn't just to feed hunger and desire. It became one of, our, one of many ways we showed our love to each other. It was only a benefit that he was an incubus, a natural master of sex. Every touch made me tremble, and every kiss on my skin made me swoon and melt in his arms. He knew how to make me moan, how to make me crave for him, how to make me shiver with ecstasy. I had been surprised to learn I was his first, and his only and with how talented he was. Soon it wasn't just my shirt that was removed from my body. Every article of clothing he and I wore ended up scattered throughout the room, unnoticed and uncared for. The only thing we cared about was each other and the pleasure we gave each other on our bed. We made sweet and passionate love, rocking to the rhythms of our hearts and our desire for each other. Every moaning made he matched it in kind. Every breath it took, Eric found a way to make it heavier and hotter. My nails and fingers dug into his shoulders and back his shoulders and back in pure ecstasy as he continued to drive into me over and over with his passion and love, pulling me higher and higher towards my limit. I could only tighten my legs around him, pull him to more heated kisses, moan against his lips in desire. We were both apexed. It was a blissful and fiery ride towards a peaceful, love, loving wave washing over bo both of our bodies. I lost my pleasure. I could only cuddle into Eric's arm as he wrapped them around me and pulled me against his chest. His feather-like kisses peppered over my forehead, making me smile. Good night, my princess. I love you. Um, I love you too, Eric. I could only close my eyes and relish the warmth Eric gave me as I let my mind escape into a dreamland. To my surprise, the child didn't return. I was a bit saddened, but I didn't let my thoughts linger on it any longer. I had a peaceful dream with Eric wrapped around me all through the remainder of the night. As the morning came, however, the other incubi essentially kidnapped their brother. Despite my minor protests, knowing that we had work to do on the wedding, the brothers were relentless. We're just stealing him for a bit. We'll return him later. But, but we have to... Everything will be alright. You can finish working on your dress while we keep him out of the house. I mean, yeah, but... You could survive a day without your love slave. You're marrying him, after all. It's not like he'll be gone forever. Everything will be alright, princess, I promise. As soon as we're done with... whatever they want to do, then I'll come straight home. 
Are they taking to a bachelor's party? Okay, I... Uh, <laughs> I love you, I guess. I could barely make out him saying I love you too as he was dragged away by his brothers. As the front door closed, I could hear Eric being thrown over someone's shoulder. Probably Sam's. I sighed before looking around the mansion. Since I was indeed alone, I had the chance to try and find that spirit again. Why had it, why had it run away the first time? I quickly rushed to the backyard, looking around, looking around it. It was much brighter, yes, but perhaps the spirit was still there? Despite not being able to find it, I scoured... And scoured the entire mansion in hopes of meeting the orb again. It almost became a game of hide and seek, only I didn't know if the orb was hiding or was gone. After a straight hour of looking around, I gave up. The orb was nowhere to be found, and I was certain I wouldn't meet it again. I could only let out a sigh at the thought, but I shook my head to forget about it at last. It had given me a moment with my love, so I was grateful. I went back into my room and flopped onto my bed, not really sure what to do. I could have organized what I was going to wear with my dress, but I really didn't want to pull my dress out of the garment bag it was in. Staring, staring at the ceiling, I felt my eyelids slowly getting heavy, and soon I was letting my sudden drowsiness take hold of me. What was happening? Why did I feel? Why did I feel like sleeping? It was close to noon, or was it past noon? I somehow couldn't remember anymore. I allowed myself to fall asleep, blaming the search and the wedding stress that lingered in my mind for tiring me out. My body floated in the darkness, met once again by a soft and peaceful lullaby. <laughs> this nap was perfect, and I definitely deserved it. My body felt comfortable, and my thoughts were lulled into a quiet hum that accompanied the lullaby in the air. The only thing that would have been made would have made it better was Eric. As if my dream wanted to please me, an image of Eric appeared in my mind. He smiled, his heart pulling smirk at me, and I felt myself becoming warm and fuzzy just from his gaze. As he floated over to me, I became entranced in his eyes. My voice wouldn't come out, despite wanting to say his name, but I wrapped my arms around his neck and pulled him close to me. He leaned into my embrace, ghosting his lips over mine teasingly. Was Dream Eric trying to seduce me in my own dreams? I pressed forward, wanting to kiss him. We both didn't make a sound, but let our kiss relay over our love for each other, between our lips. My heart pounded at my chest as he wrapped his arms around my waist and pulled me, pulled me even closer to him. It was strange. He felt so real in my arms. I combed my finger through his hair, feeling the pink copper strands on top of his head. Yet, this was a dream. I knew it was a dream. His arm gently ran along my back and waist, not daring to go below it, but making wonderful shivers run up my spine with each stroke. I really liked this dream and tightened my hold on Eric, letting him know that I enjoyed his touch. Eric eventually pulled away from the kiss and smiled down at me, running a hand over my hair and caressing my cheek. I stirred up at him lovingly, feeling a soft swell on my lips from the kiss we had shared. What I didn't expect was him slowly leaning down and planting a soft kiss over my chest, just over where my heart was. I stared, unsure of why he did such a thing. As my heart began to feel warm and lighter, I let a, let a silent sigh out of my throat, feeling the pleasure of his sensation. Eric slowly backed away and disappeared, but I continued to feel the warmth over my heart, sweetly emanating through my veins like a slow adrenaline rush. What was happening to me? Tingles ran across every nerve in my body, making me shiver in delight. Whatever this was, I liked it. Soon the warmth lulled me into a peaceful hum and I curled into myself, wrapping my arms around my body from the comfort it brought. I felt at peace while my body felt like it was embracing the warmth of, of embracing the warmth enveloping it. It was strange, but I accepted the restful feeling. <laughs> <laughs> this guy again. From the darkness, dark laughter invaded the air, breaking the lullaby and making a sudden cold feeling wash over my skin. Before I could react, however, a large and deep pain invaded my chest, almost like a sword stabbing all the way through my body. I could not see anything on the sword as I looked down at my chest, and my hands tightened over where the pain had erupted from. What was happening? I coughed, feeling blood splash out of my mouth and drip down my lips. I gasped for air, disgusted at the coppery taste of my mouth, but I was unable to break out of the illusion. I needed to wake up. A stabbing pain ripped through my, my insides, as if the invisible blade in my chest and... Ugh! 
It's over my torso, and I felt a second stab through my stomach. More blood gushing from my mouth. And we're gonna save right here, because that's so disgusting. That's some nasty stuff. But I'm pretty sure we're heading to the part where I wake up from the bad dream and then we're gonna tell Eric. And then it's gonna be the wedding day. We fall into the demon world. Same stuff. <laughs> so I might, might end up with two episodes as well. As well. <sighs> I do like the sweet lullaby they had in the beginning though. But I'm wondering who the spirit orb is. Uh, at first I thought it was gonna be like Eric's younger self just floating around but but maybe maybe who, who knows but thank you guys for watching stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one